I, I think it's a joke. It really is. You shouldn't. And a bad there, there shouldn't even be a tear. It mm. really shouldn't because how can you say? Let's say for example, Kaepernick is the whole team. To be honest, Peyton Manning wouldn't he be Peyton Manning without Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Edwin James. He had a supporting cast. And it was only his tenth game in the Super Bowl, and um, we could have won that game, but it's questionable calls. But that year after, we got Anton Bolt, went back straight to the NFC Championship game. And this goes back to the quarterback, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. Colin Kaepernick almost won us that game with his legs. So that's considered a top Tier 1. Are you listening? Niner! Yeah. How is every little summertime thing? Uh. The best part of summer has finally arrived. NFL camps are open and ready for business. The battle for pecking order and survival for a lot of players is now underway and raging. Good luck to your favorite player. Was on Instagram the other day. It's still happening. Ran into a guy that apparently hadn't been watching the news of recent, right? I hadn't seen him in a long time. He says, dude, I just didn't think the 49ers had a chance in this upcoming season. This is a victim of the media, the irreplaceable hole syndrome. He had it bad. I said, what brought you back? He says, I was watching one of your videos recently and I noticed you were going crazy like we were gonna be okay. Duh. I says, dude, let us talk about this for a moment. Let's just, no disrespect to Frank Gore, also Justin Smith, and also Patrick Willis. Patrick Willis and Justin Smith were only a shell of themselves and weren't going to be able to contribute in this upcoming season anyway. I do admit though, watching Frank Gore run behind zone blocking systems, as well as a box not being stacked, was intriguing. I will miss Frankie, and of course, Chris Borland would have been awesome right next to the return of Bowman. Okay, but you know what? Carlos Hyde is gonna be fine. He ran behind zone blocking systems when he was at Ohio State. We are still going to be awesome as far as that offensive attack on the run game. But then I went down the list with him. Without mentioning any names, I just said, you're gonna tell me this guy can't be done without? This guy can't be done without? This guy can't be done without? Mike Ayupati can't be done without. This guy can't be done without. Anthony Davis, the part-time player, could not be done without. Michael Crabtree can't be done without. <laughs> I know I said I wouldn't mention any names. Uh. <laughs> they can be done without. Just the players coming back from injury from last season alone are going to fill up most of the voids. Not even to mention the new acquisitions we got. He's back with us, fam. I talked him back into it. He's back and he's excited about the new and upcoming season as well. <laughs> What was the most outrageous thing you have heard in this offseason so far? We've heard a lot. Huh? How about in a four-tier quarterback ranking system, Colin Kaepernick is ranked at number three. <laughs> I'm... I'm, you know what? This to me is the most outrageous thing they've done. Colin Kaepernick could have went to two Super Bowls. He could have led a team to a championship. Are you kidding me? What in the world were they thinking when they came up with? Did you check out how Deep Chris made him back up off a cap? Yeah, I did. I enjoyed that. I did. Deep has worked with a lot of quarterbacks, but says Cap. Cap's taller, just as smart as any he's worked with. That's right. Cap's got as strong an arm as any of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Cap's faster than any of the other guys. Without a doubt. He stacks up right there with all the guys he's ever worked with. Mm -hmm. Now he just needs the experience and the optimism that this is his year, Rombo. Are you? I don't. This could be his greatest year yet. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Rombo, turn that yeah. music up, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are we party? Are we party? Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on, Rocco, you ain't party. Get into it. Are we party? I can already see that parade rolling down Mark Street, bro. Let me get around, we'll go back, come back, and get you this little while. Don't turn the music down. Come on now. Are we party? Tell you what, let's go right down to the webcam 
and B slap the media with some facts. <laughs> As we continue to find out what in the world is wrong with the media beating up on Colin Kaepernick, we now go to Nebraska where Corey, by the way, Corey is about to play ball. If you notice that the man looks like Hercules, <laughs> it is for a reason. Corey got that big old purpose. Corey, man, just real quickly, man. You got a Nebraska plan. Like, who are you playing? I mean, what, you, what position are you playing? I was coming up here to play football. I uh, previously don't play anymore. Uh, ran into some situations where I wasn't going to classes back uh, back in the day. And then uh, just decided to stay up here. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's okay. You still try for the 49ers, man. <laughs> hey, that will be a dream come true Corey you know the story on Colin Kaepernick as of recently yeah. as you know he's been the whipping boy of the media ever since the yes. season ended what do you think about this latest ranking of fourth tier quarterback we're talking about a guy who's really already been the quarterback how did that happen what did you feel on that I really think it's a joke I think it's a, a combination of uh, the media and the perspective of what they feel the prototypical quarterback should be instead of do you win games and what do you bring to that team i feel like kaepernick is the perfect fit for what the 49ers do mm. and i just feel like they they putting all this pressure on him when it doesn't even need to be all that pressure he got a nice running game when he had frank gore it was just a i think a miscommunication of last year with the combination of uh, Bern, him and Bernie Davies getting off sync. A little bit of the touches that I felt Frank Gore should have been getting. Mm. 10 to 16 touches. There were some games he had, this man had six touches. That's unacceptable. I don't know what Harbaugh was calling. It seemed like a different Harbaugh this year. It is straight from out the gate. I mean, he had, if it wasn't for the last two games, uh, with Gore going to 144 and then 159, I believe, to end the season, this man wouldn't even hit 1,000 yards for the season. I just feel like we should have just played to our strength and let Kaepernick be Kaepernick. Kaepernick had great numbers. He threw 10 picks. You got Eli Manning out there in New York who's throwing like, it feel like 40 picks in the season. So he don't even get half the flag. I feel like if you don't have a number one receiver and someone that like takes the slack off you, I feel like they dump all the pressure on Kaepernick. I, I think it's a joke. It really is. You shouldn't, there, there shouldn't even be a tear. Mm. It is. It shouldn't be a tear. Mm. It really shouldn't because... How can you say, let's say, for example, Kaepernick is the whole team. To be honest, Peyton Manning, wouldn't he be Peyton Manning without Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Edron James? He had a supporting cast, so you can't say, oh, if you got a supporting cast, that dumps you down to tier two. That's a joke, really? Everybody has a supporting cast. Look at every number one quarterback. They have a number one receiver, they got a great defense, or they have a great uh, something to complement that player. So look out the Broncos. Peyton Manning didn't even put up the numbers that he should have put up when he had Demarius and uh, Julian and all them. So Cap is going to shine. Just sit back and watch. I just feel like they just need to chill out on this young man. He had one bad season. This is not like he was pulling an Eli Manning throwing 40 picks in the season. The man threw 10 picks, 20 touchdowns. What do you want from him? Then he ripped off a 97, what was it, 95-yard run mm -hmm. um, against the Chargers. I mean, the man is special. Who else has done that in the history? So, like I said, man, they just need to step back and uh, lay off the man. Just let him be him. And from everything you just said, this means Cap is definitely tier two. But, Corey, do you see any legit reason to take shots at Cap? Like last season. I mean... I mean, you could say for some games you've seen some misreads. Other than that, I mean, the kid is still young. Give him a break. Mm -hmm. It could be worse. I mean, this kid could have thrown 20 picks. He could have pulled a Ryan Leaf. I just think if you notice in the season, it became do what the nation wants you to do more than what Cap can do, if that's making sense. Say, for example, uh, we want you to go out here and sling it 40 times a game mm -hmm. instead of uh, running it and playing to our strengths. We shouldn't have to adjust the offense to what – they think we should run. It should be playing to cap strength. Alex Smith did a beautiful job in 2011 running this offense. Nobody gave him no slack about doing that when he was using the uh, mobile quarterback, mixing it in with passing for like say 1,500 yards, 2,000 yards mm -hmm. in the season. It was it was all good then. And think about it, he's doing that in Kansas City and nobody's giving him slack. Mm -hmm. But it's cap doing it and it's a problem. You, you can't have it. Uh, can't have a double standard. It, it's got to be. You got to be the same onus on everybody. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody is different in their own unique way. And that's why I think there shouldn't be no tears because, like I said, either someone has an elite arm or either someone has an uh, an elite gift to lead a team. And I feel like Kaepernick can be all those. 
It's just you got to give him time and you got to give him the right coach, the right uh, coordinators around him. It, it, I, like I say, uh, it, it's, it's just supporting. It's, it's a uh, whole team. It's just not a one person uh, thing. And that's why I think it's not fair to do the tiers. This is why, Corey, I tell you, I see the shots being taken to cap all the time. And at this mm -hmm. point, I wonder, though, is it the media that they are just using cap for something to talk about? Or do they have le legitimate gripes or problems with Kaepernick? Or does this have something to do with something that we're not hearing about? It's very strange how Kaepernick has yeah. been condemned to being the worst quarterback in the league. They've taken him down. I mean, it's really low. I think it's the 27th or 28th ranking. There's only 32 teams. Yeah. So but I see so many quarterbacks <laughs> in Kaepernick. It's better than that. So what is up with this really? Yeah, I hate to say it, but if you if you like the the numbers never lie. You go back and think about uh Donovan McNabb. That man changed his whole game to appease the uh the audience. It just makes no sense. RG3 did the same thing. It just seems like when you're a mobile quarterback, you're gonna get so much flack than you would if you was just a normal drop back passer with no uh legs. And then when you don't use your legs, people are saying, What's wrong? Oh, this and that and the other. You can't have it both ways, like I said. I just feel like um, the shots are unfair. They really are. Uh, just coming from an aspect of this man doing for th uh, 3,000 yards. He had a career high this year. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's digressing that like badly. Like through uh, like his numbers are not digressing. It's actually his numbers are increasing. Go back to the year that uh, he led the uh, team to the Super Bowl. His numbers are way better than that. Mm -hmm. But did anybody give him any slack about that then? Everybody was everybody was on him. Everybody was saying, "Oh, he's the best quarterback ever." Oh, yeah, they, they, well, he oh, put up better numbers. All kind of expectations. Mm -hmm. What are they gonna say now? They're, mm -hmm. they're gonna have to come up with an excuse really quick. What are they gonna say if Cap uh -huh. has a good year? Because this is gonna be a blowback. Fans are gonna be all. Yeah. We have not. We are not gonna forget what's going on right now. What is mm -hmm. the media going to say? Are they gonna say, "Well, apparently Kaepernick was given all the weapons he needed this year, and maybe just maybe that was the reason for his digression of the, the years being gone by." See, because they have to make themselves look good. But what do you think they're going to say if Cap comes out and has a real kick butt year? I have, honestly, I really feel like they're still not going to give him any credit. See? They're going to make some excuse. The defense was good this year. Carlos Hyde was just amazing with 1,500 yards. Ah. They just never give the man his credit where credit is due. They want it to still be 1976 when it's the drop back quarterback, throw for 40 uh, touchdowns in the season. And that's not cap. And if it is cap, hey, more power to it. But let's keep the cap that we have and let's see some special things. Because I, I enjoyed the run that he had against the Chargers. I mean, I enjoyed seeing his legs. Watching it I mean, time. it's a dimension. Exactly. It's a dimension that nobody can defend. Mm. It puts a real burden when you stack eight to nine men in the box and you got Torrey Smith running down the field and Vernon Davis? But come on, man. They, that's gonna be that's gonna be nasty. I can't wait to see that. That's gonna be nasty. If this doesn't rejuvenate Vernon Davis, I don't know what will. Because if you think about it, you got two people who could blow the top off a of defense, yes. and then you got Cap to worry about. Mm. Then not to mention Carlos Hyde. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you my wild card no, right now. Get ready. Mike Davis. Mike Davis running back out of South Carolina. He and if you think about it, the 49ers hit the jackpot with Frank Gore. Frank Gore only had one good year, and that was his freshman year where he rushed over 800 yards in the season with only 65 touches. So with that being said, those are the same numbers that Carlos Hyde and uh, my, my man Mike Davis had in college. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it ain't all about what you did in college. It's about what you could do in the NFL. And they got that prototypical body size that Frank Gore had too. So I really think we got some special running backs in this backfield that we'll get to see this year. Before you go, man, you got to give me the, the holla. <laughs> have to cut a I'm about to wake my kids up, man. I'm to record with this man. That was too good. <laughs> Liner fam, introducing Oliver. Oliver, what's up, man? What's up, man? What's up? What are you up to? Oliver, just hanging around, man, as we register right into August, and they are still giving our boy a bad time. Nobody can say anything good about Colin Kaepernick but us. And you know, a tier three quarterback. What What are your feelings on now? Are the shots been taken to Colin, Colin Kaepernick? Are they warranted? I think they're unfair because he came out out of the scene starting with shining lights and he was good. And it was only his 10th game in the Super Bowl. And um, we could have won that game, but it's questionable calls. But that year after, we got Anton Bolt went back straight to the NFC Championship game. And this goes back to the quarterback tier one, tier two, tier three. 
Colin Kaepernick almost won us that game with his legs. So that's considered a top tier one. But as only a second season, he made some critical mistakes, which he learned in the 2014 where he struggled, but in 2015 where he got help from the quarterback through Kurt Warner, which is going to help him develop his pop, his footwork, and his, uh, and his throwing motion. Okay, now you mentioned that. Now I, I want to know his failure. Was that largely Cap's fault, or do you see any other variables involved in this? Because when I look at the Cap mess, I see a lot of people involved. But what is your opinion on that? I think it was they were exhausted. Three straight NFC Championship games, one Super Bowl. It takes a toll. Look, look at LeBron James. He got to the NBA Finals. His body takes a toll. Look at the Seahawks. They're not going to contend this year because their body is going to be messed up. Because if you, because football is a very physical sport. Every week, then you go, you start in September, August preseason, go all the way until January, then you have like five months off. Still not enough time. And plus, they were injured, the offensive line. And I hate how the media is talking about the Niners' O line, but yet they're not talking about the Denver Broncos who are having five new offensive linemen. And they're just brushing it off. It's like they're, everyone's bashing on the Niners. So. And you know, you say that as just what I was about to ask you about. Is the media using our boy just for news sake? Is it because they can't find anything else to talk about right now? Why is it that every time they look at the 49ers, the first thing to do is take a shot at Colin Kaepernick? What do you think? They, take a, they keep taking shots at Cap because he's um, he has a lot of expectations. When you have a lot of expectations that are not met, people are going to keep bashing you. But he's a young person. He's like 25, 20, 27 years old. Mm -hmm. Still has the limit, you know? Mm -hmm. It's only it's gonna be his third full season, Mambo. Third full season. And he's gonna have new weapons with Tory Smith. And the media is not talking about the additions that we've had. They're all talking about the big losses: Patrick Willis, Anthony Davis, um, Justin Smith, um, Navarre Bowman. They're talking about all these injuries that happened. Alvin Smith missed nine games, but he's gonna be back. He's healthy. No distractions. You have Charles Haley guiding him. You know, mm. what more? What more do you need? Wow. Everyone's hungry. All the fuel, all the fuel that the media is adding. Yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna. And we're going to be unstoppable. That's what I'm telling you. For those words, it's music to my ears. All right. With that said, now you just pointed out, just before we get into the media people, the new weapons Cap has. Is there any way that you could see a failure? The failure that I could see is um, the first two weeks. They're not on par, but after that, everything is going to be on par. Mm. Let's take an example of Antoine Bolden when he first came in. How is how is he going to get involved? Then that week one against Green Bay, they had a lot of chemistry. Mm -hmm. So this training cap that starts on Monday is going to be very crucial. Damn. Now, we got some people we want to spotlight as far as the media goes who've been giving us a hard time off season long. All right, let's shoot some names because this is going to be the thing that makes us feel better. Spotlight these people who have been giving us a hard time. Who's your who's top of your list of guys that don't know what they're talking about? There was Eric Davis one time, <laughs> um, Paul, Gut Paul Gutierrez and Mike Sandu. Those three. <laughs> Paul Gutierrez, what do you enjoy? What's his stupidest story this season so far? Quinn Dial might get cut. <laughs> <laughs> this fool got cut muscle-wise. He's skinny, he's yeah. leaned back, he's toned. Does he mean it by that? I don't know. You, they have this Raider guy talking about the Niners. Come on, man. <laughs> and Paul has DeAndre White being cut right along with Quentin Dial. <laughs> oh, he also mentioned this one that I was kind of amused by. Bruce Miller, between Trey Millard and Bruce Miller. Now, maybe they're not going to keep both. I found that his only intriguing cut. He cut Bruce Miller. I don't. I, that one's a hard call, isn't it? I think it's it's gonna be a tough call, but I think it's gonna fit with the offense because with Bruce Miller, you had Frank Gore, and don't, no disrespect to Frank Gore, I love Frank Gore, but he was getting old, mm -hmm. so you needed a big back. But now that we have um, Carlos Hyde and Reggie Bush and Kendall Hunter, these are spread backs. They can do the spread offense, the read option, and you won't you wouldn't need a big fullback unless we're doing a power O, which I don't think we're using because we're using zone blocking. Which you cut into the sides and run. This is why, that's why Trey Millard is a big H back. Could be taking Bruce out. Paul may have scored one point. All right. Eric Davis. Give me the worst thing you've heard from Eric Davis so far. I think it was on NFL Network. He said um, on paper, I think we're terrible. 
something like that. But I, I heard it in the heartbreak. I was like, he used to work for the Niners. Come on, why are you bashing him? We're sharing the same stupid moments in Eric Davis's career as NFL Network analyst. And you're right, that was it. Just a, and, uh, I, and I have one more. Steve Young, come on, man. He's talking about the perception of the Niners. Like, really, you used to see quarterbacks from the Niners. Come on, don't talk bad about them. You know? have, this, have their support. Like, Montana, he had to feel like, you know, Copper needs to improve. And everyone got mad, but Montana was right. He needed to improve because, like, in 2014, his pocket presence wasn't that good. So I think Colin Kaepernick took that time to improve and took Joe Montana's word, even though they didn't train with Montana, he trained with Warner. So and these are all the things that are going to help. So you know, and everybody's going to have the two cents. Although you're right, um, I'm a little shocked that I seen that article the other day. I just didn't take it seriously. Steve Young, I don't know what compels him to do that. Jerry Rice broke out on us last year too. I guess we're going to have certain people that say weird things suddenly out of nowhere. So. Media. I think I think everyone's hating on Tom Sula too. No experience, but I think he's a perfect fit. Like look for Pete Carroll, he's high energy. You need a coach that talks to the players and on the field. Everything all in one. You know? I think Jim Harbaugh, he's a great coach, but he was missing that part. We'll and um, I, I was watching on, on YouTube some 49er fan video about the Saints game, and I think it was like Dor towards the end of like the game, I think the Saints were gonna do a Hail Mary, and someone from the sidelines called a timeout, and that person wasn't Harbaugh, it was Jim Tom Sula, because he didn't like what the offense was doing, so he called a timeout to prepare the defense to, for the right proper defensive play to call, so that's a good thing that I saw. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy's no new person to football, that's why I'm thinking these dumb remarks have no place. I mean, Jim Tom Tula is every bit as qualified as he should be. But before we go, man, I gotta get the holla. <laughs> yeah, I'll look here. All right. Three, two, one. Niners! That was, that was the most careful yell I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Corey, for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> By the way, please do this, and you'll probably see me anyway, but whenever you run across a forum that is saying something ridiculous about the 49ers, especially BSPN, check with them daily. They'll see a little section right below that says comments. Now, you'll probably already see me in there. I do not let them get away with a thing. And it's our job to see that they're kept in line. Because let's face it, BSPN makes up half the things they do and they're always coming up with these stupid questions anyway. So go in there, stay classy, stay calm, but let them, just let them know that we're aware of the fact that they're dishing out nothing but poo poo and I guarantee you, you'll feel better after having done so. <laughs> oh, I, oh, we got a job ahead of us. But not too much longer. The season's going to be getting started soon. I'll see you there. And please, remember, don't forget to subscribe. Because when I come back to talk to you about more 49er football, I want you to hear me knocking, babe. Count me out. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, I'm not gonna be sacred.